um, the rubbing technique, which is mortar. Yeah. What happens with um, massage and Trina is the um, the techniques within Trina takes a long time to learn. So just to learn, this is the most common technique, which is Gunta, which is the rubbing fist. You can learn it in a day, a week, but to actually perfect it takes months, if not years, to do. And within this, you use a lot of the other massage techniques until you're proficient within some of the other techniques. Yeah. What I'd like to do then is use you guys for a model one by one because well, one by one is not <laughs> <laughs> So that's quite easy. So which I would like to go first? Yeah. Um, Any chicken shoot up? No, no, no. Um, you can face the wall, but then your back will be facing the audience. <laughs> and the other thing with three now which is different in many of the massage therapists, you know, we also get to help you with a blanket. So if you're inappropriately dressed, or you, you know, don't want to show this if you want it, then we can do so. And the blanket works on many different levels. It also protects my hands from friction burns, if the technique is not as good. So I'm going to start with the first technique, which is Gunther, around the neck. What we'll do, we're here for 45 minutes, so I'll also take you through a few techniques so that you can take away and use it within your own practice. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So at least you have something to go away with. Now, I'll con because um, you guys are massage therapists, I'll compare Trina to massage more than Trina to osteopathy, because then it makes it slightly a bit more relevant to what we do and how we do it. One thing you'll notice is that I'm using a technique in one area. So not just the, like I said, the channels, but I'm also working it over the muscles. And so what I want to do is bring the blood and the chi in and out of the capillaries, bathing the muscles in this area. So not just the brisket, the vagus capilla, deltoid. And by doing so, we're also dispersing fluids. And a lot of times with pain, discomfort, is that the blood is not circulating as well or as quick as what it should be. And so by doing this, we're actually helping the blood move around the body. So it becomes a form of a manual drainage system. And so once you've actually moved the blood, then better mobility becomes easier. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. How does it feel? Good. <laughs> now also, because we're working on the theory of Chinese medicine, here is the spine, and this is a channel runs here, which is called the Du channel. About two inches off there is another channel, which is the bladder channel, paragraph. And so by working the bladder channel, each of the points on the bladder channel, at least this part in the back, from here to here, are named after different organs. So we can stimulate the lungs, the heart, the stomach, the spleen, the core bladder, all the way down to the kidneys and large intestine. And so they're named by that. And um, when, when I, sorry, what is your name? Elaine. 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 Yeah. Okay. And your name, Kia. Great. Kia. 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 So I'm, I'm from London and I can't get an answer. Uh, so, <laughs> it's very difficult for English people. Every, every language is very difficult for English people, including English. <laughs> sorry, can you edit that bit? Yeah. <laughs> Very soft London accent, though. Sorry? It's a very soft London accent you have. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's a wannabe northern boy. Yeah, it's very harsh. <laughs> yeah. So, once one side, and you can also then work on the other side. Now, if a person's coming in with trauma, disease to one shoulder, it's not necessary to work on both sides. And the reason for that is that uh, unlike massage, where you kind of count the strokes or you want to be as symmetrical as possible, left and right, top and bottom, what I want with three now is that um, if there's a problem on this side of the body and the blood is stuck and this side is okay, I would want to stimulate the movement of the blood over here to get the blood in the channels and also down the arm. 
it's not necessary to increase the blood circulation here. So if I increase the blood circulation on the good side as well as the bad side, the blood will find a better flow, which will travel here, and then you still still have the oxygen nutrients on the bad side. And that makes it you know, a little bit of sense. So would you go for a treatment mainly for a particular trauma or for a particular area? With intervening, you do both. Yeah. So in China, it's in, we have departments. And so to get into the department, you register because if you're within a hospital. But then you have many clinics outside that you just turn up and um, get a general treatment. Now, as a practitioner, I see many people with injuries or disease. And so that's why I advertise myself as a practitioner to treat these things. So 90% of my patients come this way. And then as they get better, they keep coming because of maintenance is better and cheaper. Yeah, but you have many other practitioners that will also treat any condition, you know, no condition. Yeah? Now, if there is no discomfort, you find that your body is relatively healthy. And the job of the practitioner is to look around the body, searching for wherever the muscles are in spasm. Where the muscles are in spasm, then that's where a practitioner will apply the techniques or their attention. They'll work the area and then also then go back to the area to see has the muscle gone out of spasm. And there are many things that happen inside the body internally that you cannot see and you cannot measure. But you can see it and measure it because of the expression of the outside of the body. And you see how long I've spent on the other part of the body.
the when working, you're continually diagnosing also. So I would feel one side of the body and how it feels against the other side of the body. I'd also be inspecting the spine, the, the posture, movement through the posture. And one of the nice things between that, again if I compare this to massage yourself, is that um, we work single-handedly a lot of the time. So because you work single-handedly a lot of the time, you're actually able to walk around the person, so adjusting your posture. Whereas if you're fixed with an effort two hands on, you always got to fix on your back. So here, I can actually work one hand and then adjust. And what I'm also doing, I'm not just adjusting the position of the hand, I'm also adjusting the position of the body, but still maintaining an area that I'd like to work on. And so this actually helps protect me as a practitioner for trauma or pain um, in the lower back. Thank you for coming. This is like, this is like a payment. Yeah, it was a room for the people that had a lot of trouble. <laughs> So you can, I mean, are you qualified to diagnose as such? Yeah. No question, can I? Even if you're in the wrong room. <laughs> the, what you classify as qualified to diagnose, because anybody can talk of an imbalance. <laughs> yeah, I suppose only Western practitioners are talking about Western disease. Yeah. Whereas a, a Western practitioner couldn't tell me about the constitution. <laughs> yeah, the chi, the blood, the A doctor can't tell me. Yeah. So he's not qualified to diagnose within our system. No. If someone came to you and, you know, and said, oh, my shoulder's sore, um, I think I need a little bit of work on it, um, would you be able to turn around and say, oh, you have a frozen shoulder, we'll work on that? Um, only because I'm, I'm a Western trained practitioner. Okay. But if I'm not a Western trained practitioner, the answer is still yes, because what you'll be doing is diagnosing an imbalance. So when you put your hands on, you can say, okay, the muscle here is no good, the muscle here is no good. If you're talking about diagnosing from, if he is a frozen shoulder, there are certain characteristics that a frozen shoulder would have. Yeah, yeah and even many Western doctors misdiagnose the frozen shoulder. And I've had many guys come into clinic, my doctor says I have a frozen shoulder. Well, um, but it hurts here. Yeah. If you have a frozen shoulder, this is not the yeah. general movement. A frozen shoulder would be, yeah, just by studying the body, yeah? Yeah, so, but you still would be able to treat. Mm -hmm. You know, as I studied sports injury therapy, and once we diagnose it, it would be bursa, nerve, tendon, damage. The treatment is relatively similar. The difference between that and between the practitioner is that we would know and work the area. You know, to move the blood, to move the chi, um, adjust, um, you know, the shoulder. Now, even in Western medicine, when you look at aspects of shoulder problems, I will stop that and say something. Right, if you look at Western medicine, sometimes shoulder problems are also depending on the age of the individual. The lung may be weak, and so the lung drops. Because the lung drops, the lung is like an airbag and it holds the clavicle, the cranium, at a certain position. Because the lung is dropped, it's impossible to raise your shoulder. It doesn't matter how much you try to do it, you cannot raise your shoulder. I can't physically go past this, it causes pain. Yeah? By increasing the lung capacity that you're putting the joint back in position, then raising your arm isn't a problem. It's not a frozen shoulder. Yeah? But a lot of old people are misdiagnosed because their lungs are like this and they can't do it. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah so by this um, exercise, um, improve them to open up the chest, expand the lungs, um, the intercostal muscles, the diaphragm, mm -hmm. this will help. Yeah. yeah. Then treatment, then also will help to move the blood, move the chin. Yeah. A lot of advice sometimes patients are given is to use a hot water bottle because it takes away the discomfort of pain. But in this country, okay, not this country, I'm English. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Ireland, it's very similar to England, where it's cold and damp. A whole water bottle increases the dampness, which will slow down the circulation and make your condition even much worse. 
where you use an infrared heat lamp, a hairdryer will actually do a lot better because the hairdryer is dry. If you're in a hot country, then yes, you use the hot water bottle because it will rehydrate the area. But we're not in a hot, warm country, unfortunately, so there should be a contraindication in the treatment. Yeah, so even um, lumbar, sciatic pain, and the person comes and says, well, I have sciatic pain. Now, it, it could be 101 different reasons why we, we do it. Through prolapse, inflammation, swelling, trauma. Yeah, equally, sometimes, just a silly thing which I've treated. A patient has back pain. They've been wearing the same shoes for so long. Um, there's a problem with one of the shoes. The body doesn't recognize here's the problem. So it adjusts its balance, causing the hip to go out. But they keep wearing the same shoes. Changing the shoes, treating the ankles, helps them to align themselves with the floor. The back pain disappears. disappears. Now, when you look at that, even through Chinese medicine, every time there's a back pain, a kidney deficiency, a kidney is, you know, not as an organ, but as a function. You know, it's not always the case. So, you know, Chinese medicine isn't always correct. Western medicine isn't always correct. You know, Western medicine, you have the aspects of an X-ray, MRI, CT scan, which will help you, but it only gives you a picture of what's going on. It doesn't give you the, the idea of what, actually what the disease is. Yeah. So eventually, the the quality of the therapist with the sensitivity of the hands is better than every single one of them, because the patient would also come in into clinic and say, "I have low back problems," because they can feel the lower back problem. But what we don't feel is the fact that in the mid back um, it's hyperextended, and so it's causing the spine the spine to tilt, mm -hmm. causing hyperextension here. So go to many practitioners, they treat the lower back. They don't treat this because the patient don't complain of it. Whereas you, when you lie on the couch, you can see that hump. By treating that hump, it's very difficult because it's also stabilized by the sternum in front. But you treat that, you find that no, pain disappears, lower back pain disappears. Does that make sense? Now, man, what do you do? What do I do? Uh, I supply and fix water filters. Okay. And do you know this is a tweener? Yes, I came along out of okay. curiosity. I'm interested in I'm interested in helping the so. oh. A lucky day, could make you make the third person here. And what I'd like to do is also give you a sample of what it's like. So it matters not how much we speak until you feel what it is. You can watch it on telly, read the book, you still have no idea until you actually touch. So would you like to actually be sure. involved? Yeah. Okay. What made Tweena as a therapy stand out above all the rest for you, Errol? What makes Tweena stand out different to all of the other therapists? There we go. Thank you. Very much indeed. Turn the camera if it's any good or not. The techniques you were saying, what's the difference? The techniques are very different. I mean, the way you use your hands are very different. And although Errol was just working to remain back, I could really feel the energy right down to the base of my spine. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Hi, right. and I'll answer that question. One of the differences between Tweena, if you see it back in the same way, yeah. between Tweena and many other therapists, number one, osteopathy, chiropractic, um, physiotherapy, deep tissue massage, massage, Swedish massage, rhythmic massage, are all based within Swedish massage. Or the main stroke is actually the ephemerage. This is the main stroke for every single one of them. The ephemerage is not a medical stroke to treat disease. So it's more for a relaxing aspect. Where it be lymphatic drainage, it does not treat um, scar tissue. And it's not strong enough to break down the adhesions of muscles um, if there's a problem. Yeah, so you can increase and move the blood through circulation through the effleurage. Um, where we have the oil so we can be you know, even dry. Yeah? The problem is, is that the effleurage also travels the direction of the muscle fibers. It's not often you do an effleurage, they say, um, towards the heart, 
but you generally travel in the direction of the muscle fibers. And so when treating disease, I'm working on when treating disease, I don't always you're a model just there. I don't always want to travel in the direction of the muscle fiber. What I want to do to break down scar tissue damage is move in the opposite direction across the muscle fiber. And so then using tweed fat across the muscle fiber can actually do so. The other difference between tweener and many of the other massage therapists is that with one hour or half hour, I can actually stay here just to get the blood in and out of this local area. I can feel here. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So then what I want to do relax, okay, is I can stay here to get the blood in and out of the capillaries. When you do many of the other massage therapists, you cannot stay this long here. The patient gets bored, probably. You as a practitioner may get bored, but between them, my job is to find where these bits are. And so I can actually stay here until the blood is moved and relaxed. Yeah, so this will make it slightly different to many of the other massage therapists. Now, equally, if you look at shiatsu, Thai massage, and a few of these different types of massages, they are based in massage routines, regardless of the patient's complaint. You can, so if you go to Thailand and you go get a Thai massage, you say, I've got neck pain, they'll give you a whole complete body massage. It's not broken down. Say well, I, I can treat the neck. Yeah, shiatsu is very much so very similar. Yeah, so that gives it as a medical treatment, not as strong. Yeah, so if you're a footballer and you've damaged your ankle, then I treat the ankle, maybe from the knee to the ankle. But I don't need to give you a head massage to treat the ankle. Yeah, in Indian head massage, as I'm moving on, Indian head massage because of the the glands, pituitary hypothalamus, and so on, all healing takes place if you move these glands. So you, in some senses you can, and you can use the head similar to reflexology of the feet by treating zonal parts. Yeah? But, yeah, so there are some of the comparative differences between Tweena and um, the other massage therapists. <coughs> Tweena uses the actions of the um, acupuncture points, so therefore you can use, this is by pressing, it's called anther. And so I can press along the channel, arsia points, which means local tender areas. So you can do something very similar to the use of acupuncture. The sensitivity of the practitioner, after a while, the hands become very, very sensitive. And what we do is that we try to work around the body, finding where the muscles are in spasm, where the scar tissue is, and we're not afraid to press to move the scar tissue. Because once the scar tissue is removed, then better blood becomes in here, better oxygen, better nutrients, and the patient repairs much faster. Whereas if you say, well, okay, it hurts, and because you're paying me X amount of euros, I don't want to cause you discomfort, so therefore I'll work somewhere else. Yeah? Where tweener is, okay, the pain is here. You say ouch a few times, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's okay. But when I take my hands off, like when I took my hands off you guys, hopefully you'd have felt the blood in the cheek moving around the area. And that is quite important to, to tweener. We do use oils. So it's not all the time that we you know, fully close. So sometimes we may use oils to certain parts of the body, neck, hand, wrist and so on. And a lot of the oils that we use are medical based or medicine based. Yeah, so it's a move blood. Um, this is an anti-rheumatic oil. So after the massage is done, you'd still feel the oil penetrating the skin. You can't or wouldn't suggest that you use this oil all over the body. Yeah, because that wouldn't be very pleasant. And avoid the groin area and eyes as well. <laughs> Whereas with massage, the oils you can use can be used all around the body. Now, equally when saying that, if you're working with cancer victims. Um, you probably also find uh, with a cancer victim, the liver has a lot of work to do. You know, breaking down a lot of the um, toxins in the body and so on. And so when you use a lot of oils, like aromatherapy, the liver itself, then it's overburdened. And so oils then become contraindicated um, to certain conditions. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's good. Yeah.
That wasn't a treatment, that was, I was just kidding. <laughs> Now, when treating with Tweeno, we do, do go through a whole complete diagnostic process. The, so, because it's based on Chinese medicine, we will look at the tongue, we sometimes take the pulse, and we listen to what the patient says, history of disease, family history of disease. So it's not just that we just go straight in like I did and a massage in the shoulder. But um, a massage in the shoulder is very pleasant regardless of who, when, where. By doing so, by touch, you can pick up information from your hands that where there are imbalances. Whatever we do with one hand, we try to make sure that we can do with the other as well. So your technique is, yeah, both sides. The, depending on the body size which you're working as well, depends on the pressure that you're applying. So if you're a heavier type person, then we can use the forearm to get deeper into the muscles. Is there any more questions? I was I'll just keep on talking. <laughs> Are you finding in your clinic there are more and more sports people turning to Tweenar over the conventional sports massage? In, in the clinic, this, a lot of guys come with this word, deep tissue, and I'm trying to find out exactly what it means where it comes from. And do, do any of you guys know what it is? Deep tissue? Yeah. It's, it's getting in the muscles where it's the knots. And it's, uh, so it's just more or less. It can be quite painful. Yeah. Like, and it can be bruised. Mm. I think that with a lot of deep tissue, because of that, the understanding of Chinese medicine will make deep tissue a lot more pleasurable experience because yeah. then you can open the channels and points. Mm -hmm. And then you can use this to go deep into the body. But just to go deep into the body without the knowledge, you end up traumatizing a lot of the muscles in the body. Yeah. So a lot of guys come to my clinic not just for. You know, they want deep tissue massage, then you have to kind of re-educate. They also come with a lot of you know, sports injuries, treatments, and at the moment we're running open clinics, and we're treating 15, 20 people you know, a day, which is pretty good. So a lot of people are actually moving with their feet. But because Tweena is very new, and again, you can do as much advertising you know, as, as you can afford, but people come by word of mouth. Yeah, so I can put the best leaflets out there, or flyers, but no one's gonna turn up. It takes one great person, and then once that person says, ah, oh, yes, I did, and yeah, then you don't need to leave it anymore. Yeah, because one brings two, two brings four, four brings eight, the numbers actually add up. So people talk. So mm -hmm. word of mouth spreads very fast, yeah. rather than the leaflet and the flyers. So I think once it's here, it'll take off very, very well. I find that personally. Yeah. Mm. It's my work. It's definitely word of mouth.
<laughs> How does that feel compared to what I do? Just say different, please. Different. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me the truth on the way out. He thought I was uh I'm firm. Gung ho. <laughs> I think I'm a bit more um not as refined as my technique. Um gun I prefer to regular massage because the whole hand is moving and it's different movements and it's constantly moving. It's not jamming into one muscle, which and I find with regular massage, so that's why I prefer to be there. And how does it make you feel afterwards? Released. Released. Yeah, relaxed. My muscles aren't like it's really tight and sore and I feel a lot more relaxed now after that. Excellent. Kind of, yeah, overall, it's like. Feels sort of all together again, or all one, or something. All working. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry about it.